at first I, I couldn't uh, quite understand what we were supposed to be doing online uh, if we weren't doing third term uh, content. But then I, I realized that uh, reading through the article again, uh, she was very fair. She saw the side of the school. She saw the side of the parents. But uh, I'm sure the parents side uh, won over in that decision, which is uh, we're not working. We don't have money. Uh, it's it's uh, consuming data. And so I think the easiest way for her to say this is why don't you talk to your parents and the stakeholders and if they if, if they can uh, go with you or, or let you continue then go ahead and if not then you know school has not started yet anyway so I, I think it's, it, it looks at like both sides uh, fairly if you read the article well, Professor, you would agree with me that there are people uh, who have no access to internet and data. How would this group be taken care of during this time? Uh, well, uh, there's uh, radio, there's TV, uh, and radio is increasing in the sense that the federal government is, is now expanding the broadcasts to include uh, all of the 36 uh, stations in the 36 states. So we will just have to, because radio is very is pervasive. So it can be it can be on the phones. It can it can be a little radio with the battery. So it's more available for the children to use. Uh, and if the learning proceeds, uh, what curriculum would they be using? And how do you explain this? Because it's not clear at this point. Yeah, well, uh, the curriculum, uh, well, for me, uh, especially as a school owner, uh, uh, it's, it's an agreement with you and the parents. Mm -hmm. Whatever the parents say we're going to, to do, that is what we're going to do. We're going to do online, and whether we're doing uh, third-term curriculum or not, we're just not going to call it third-term curriculum because the state's, state is not yet in the third term, and that is what we're just going to say. All right, lastly, we, can't, we can't label it anything else. All right, lastly, Professor. Because you have to understand her perspective, you know, I mean, we're a litigious society now. It used to be uh, God will do it is what parents would say. But now if parents go to court and they sue, sue us or sue the state, uh, it's not going to be funny. Mm -hmm. So I can understand her being uh, in, in the middle of the road right there. All right. What's the future of education in your opinion post-COVID? Will e-learning become a constant, you think? I hope it will, because, uh, you know, I, I've been campaigning for it to be. And so, so I'm hoping that we will not just go back to the way we were uh, and letting uh, uh, just th this pandemic, you know, uh, end without us doing what the whole world has been doing before. I mean, the, 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 it's, it's, it's global. The, the, the rest of the world is doing e-learning. Even those of us here in Nigeria have benefited from online courses that are given uh, 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 free of charge. And so we see the benefit, but the government has to now insist and you know, have the willpower to make us you know, really do e-learning and do it right. Because what we're doing right now is just uh, coping E-learning should be done properly, then it will work.